Hello, my name is Justin Bright, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program version 1.2.2, in which I am attempting to make Kerbals a multiplanetary species. And we've really made strides towards that goal today, as we have arrived on Duna with Mad Beth, Jai, and Gersi. So the Starlifter shuttle is somewhere overhead. We see Ike looming large in the sky there. And, uh, ooh, wow, all the planets are actually visible in a strange way from the surface of Duna. I'm sure that's something that um, Distant Object Enhancement is doing about that. But that's actually really cool because you can see the... Um, you can see the inclination of the of the entire solar system as it relates to where we are sitting on the planet. So that's really cool. All right. So now that we have arrived, uh, we have our ladder all out. So we are ready to move on. But we should, before we go, make sure that this uh, vessel isn't going to lose its connection or anything. And let's get the solar panels out, all except for the one that's by the ladder. So that this thing doesn't die of lack of electric charge uh, between now and when um, our astronauts come back. So, let's see. First of all, we could probably grab some science and leave it right here in the, in the vessel. So we are in the Midland Sea. And as you might recall, our mission here is to find the intersection of three different biomes. All right, so we're sending up some funds in the form of science, or science in the form of funds, however you want to put it. And let's pop out our first Kerbinaut. Unable to satisfy your curiosity, you attempt to drill into the rock with your tool. You're thinking it would be a lot easier if you had some kind of pulsating drill thing on a robotic arm. Curious indeed. All right, so let's drop this science off. And then we can actually send some of that back. After testing, you determine the red sand castles are plausible. Indeed. All right. Cool. So we're going to leave that there. And now it's time to head out and climb down to the surface. And hopefully everything works the way that I had intended. And uh, this vessel here, this ascent uh, vehicle, uh, we should be able to kick off this stage and launch and get into orbit with the Starlifter shuttle. So that should not be a problem. But first things first... We want to head over to the rover and make sure that we can actually get this thing all set up and moving for us. All right, so walk into the back where we actually have a crew hatch and an airlock, and we can actually extend this ladder very nice. But yeah, this thing is built, um, like I mentioned uh, previously, this thing is built such that... Uh, it doesn't, you don't need a jetpack to use this. So this is something that we could use elsewhere if we were planning on doing so. All right, so here we are. Our scientist is inside our rover. Everything seems to be online. Let me just double check everything here. Let's see, so we have our rear air lock, very nice. Uh, we have two emergency shelter pop tents that we can uh, deploy. So we can actually pop that out and then they can use that to sleep for the night uh, when, they're, um, when they're resting. And that will allow them to actually stay down here for a longer period of time. Because right now they would only have 27 days, but if we start this habitat, we have 127 days worth of, uh, um, of time. They'll actually have good sleeping space. They're not sleeping in their cabin in the cockpit here. And somebody informed me in my comments that I was being a complete doofus driving this thing last time. And I was trying to drive forward using this probe. So we should control from here. Ugh. So hopefully I haven't messed up the wheels. I'll probably have to uh, change the way that works once again. But that's fine. Uh, so we have docking module where we have our uh, pop tents attached. We have inside... This service bay, we have all sorts of science that we'll be able to do, which is very, very nice. Uh, we have a little container full of supplies, which is going to allow us to have not 134 days, but um, it should be a good month or so that they're able to stay down here on the surface. Uh, we have a geology lab, which is our most important piece, um, which is going to allow us to find the right place uh, to set up our, uh, our final base another container of supplies, and then the cockpit way up here in the front. 
Um, so yeah, and then this thing has solar panels, it has communications, um, set of eight wheels, which I've set up to hopefully make this thing very stable and able to drive around. And we have here a, um, a better uh, antenna dish so that we're able to make sure we stay in communication at all times. So uh, I'm going to take a minute and get the other Kerbals over to the uh, geology rover. All right, and now our pilot has boarded the Malamute rover, which is, if you're wondering, that's exactly what this is. Uh, this this rover is built from the Malamute uh, parts that that rover dude has built in the USI constellation, one of his many many mods, um, but and it's for exactly this purpose. So this should work out great. All right, so we are all kitted out. We have. Um, Jai set up in the geology lab to monitor the location as we travel around. Um, we have uh, Madbeth and Gersi, our uh, pilot and engineer, are set up inside the uh, front cab of the rover, and we are prepared for our journey. G Gersi, are you are you okay over there? You're looking a little twitchy. I guess you're very excited that we're here. All right, so. Uh, here on the ground, we actually have some science that we can do. So let's get some science done. So we are collecting and recording temperature data from the environment. That's not very exciting. Atmospheric pressure. The atmosphere is pretty thin, even at the surface. You don't think parachutes or wings would work very well here. And we found that out on our way down, that's for sure. Uh, let's do some mystery goo. Yeah, we observed the goo. Very exciting. Seismic scan. Uh, insight into the seismic activity of Duna. Well, one would hope so. And a gravity scan. Beautiful. Uh, looks like we can't do those because I think I've actually used them. Can I? I wish I had something that I could use to collect science. I didn't think to bring a... I don't think that I thought to bring a science container, like one of the ones that can pull the science from various things. So that's a shame, but... Uh, shoot. I can use... I can actually use the wonderful, wonderful... Uh, ship manifest to transfer all the science over. So we'll do that really quick. All right, all science collected. Uh, so now I'm hoping that this thing is going to let me... Darn. I was really hoping that this thing was acting as a science lab so it could actually clean the... Uh, um, clean the science experiments. But we can't, but that's fine. Uh, but we can start life support. I didn't realize this had a life support module of any sort. All right, we are retracting the ladder. All of our science uh, experiments are um, closed up. Very nice. So I think now it's just a matter of getting us out to where we want to go. So back on our ascent vehicle, we are going to retract this ladder. Pull that up, extend this solar panel, and this is just going to sit and wait for our return. All right, so taking a look at our life support status, now that everything is all deployed and ready to go, looks like we have 53 days worth of supplies and then our 15 day grace window, obviously. Uh, we should have infinite power uh, so long as we are in the sun and not doing too much driving at night because uh, it looks like our uh, Energy recharge is not super high, so we're going to need to be very careful about how much power we're using as we're driving. Um, and our habitation time, we have 122 days and indefinite versus homesickness, which is interesting. I'm not sure why uh, the homesick value is that high, but I'm going to take it. I'm not going to complain too much about that. Um, and I think, uh, I'm not sure if the geology lab, I'm not sure if this is a recycler or if it's just more life support as in like habitation time or what it is, but it seems to be helping. So that's nice. All right. So now, uh, I think they're actually going to rest for a little while as we wait for the, um, goodness, ground tether attached, make sure we don't pop up into the air and then start our habitat here. Very nice, up to 227 days, and we are just going to sit, uh, and they're going to relax until the uh, Duna Surveyor flies overhead, which shouldn't be too long from now, and then we're going to use that to determine where we should be checking for, uh, to try to find this location that is the intersection of those three biomes. Okay, so I messed up a little bit with uh, my previous attempt at finding the distinguishing minerals for each of the locations um, but 
Uh, what I've come up with now is what I'm hoping is closer together than what I'm seeing here, but I've put down two of each of um, locations of rare metals, water, and silicates. And uh, water is indicative of the Midland Sea, uh, silicates is indicative of the Northern Shelf, and uh, rare metals is indicative of the poles. So I'm trying to find a place where all three of those things touch, but I'm finding that to be very difficult. Um, my original set of locations, I'm not sure actually has all three touching. So we need to go actually go take a look and make sure that that is, uh, that is happening. We are not directly overhead with our surveyor satellite, so I'm getting kind of skewed angles. So the distances are a little bit janky. And it took until that first night on Duna. So let's just make sure that we have our pop tent open so that they can rest for the evening and we will try again in the morning. All right, the pop tents are deployed. So we have a place to sleep for the night. And you can see the sun is almost completely down here on Duna. And so we are actually not, we actually don't have enough power to do anything other than just to sit tight. Uh, so yeah, we will resume the expedition when the sun is bright and shining overhead. All right, we are using electricity at an alarming rate, so we are going to shut some things down. Let's shut this down. Retract antenna. We need to get our uh, electric charge usage down pretty far because we are not looking good otherwise. There we go. This this recycler was the biggest uh, the biggest hog of energy. So we turned that off and we're actually doing okay. Uh, so let's see. Okay, I think we're going to be fine now. Good morning, Duna. I'd like to wait till the sun comes up a little bit more just so that we can have a little bit better uh, time with our energy collection. Okay, so now let's go ahead, stop these habitats and retract. And we are good to begin our expedition. So what I have done is I have planted a couple different markers based on uh, the Duna surveyor uh, going overhead. And we're trying to find places where the Midland Sea, the Northern Shelf, and the Poles all touch. And I'm not 100% sure if that location exists, but it might be like somewhere in this area up here. But we're going to be doing some driving around to try to find it. And our first target is going to be, I think, uh, so... Let's see, I, I wish there was a better way to visualize uh, biomes here from the map. All right, so we have our curb net access open. We can't see very well on this thing. Um, as in, not very... We can see, see well, but we can't see very far. But this should show us the biomes in the local area. Because uh, this is showing that this is the Midland Sea biome all around us. So hopefully, when as we start driving, the, uh, we have this set to automatically refresh um, every three and a half seconds. So we should hopefully be able to see when we get to a point where we can see more than one biome. So we've got this open. We're going to want to have our surface scanner open as well. And our, uh, X science is going to tell us when we have science to do. So let's start heading in the direction of where we have detected silicates. So we are six kilometers away from where the Duna surveyor has detected subsurface silicates. And our wheels are messed up, so let me fix the wheels. Ah yes, turn off the ground tether, and now we are ready to get moving. So let's save the game again, so that I don't break this. And we are off in the direction of silicates, perhaps. So let's turn off in this direction. And this will show us the juncture between silicates, uh, which is the northern shelf, and uh, water, which is going to be uh, the Midland Sea. So we are off and driving. And we are kind of tacking alongside the sun, so we need to be very careful about our energy usage uh, here on Duna because the sun, um, the solar power that you get from the sun is governed by the inverse square law. So we actually get a lot less solar power the further we are away. Fortunately, it looks like uh, if we get ourselves up to speed and then just kind of coast, uh, we don't have to worry too much about um, 
losing speed to friction. Uh, that's kind of a, you know, one of the downsides of the simulation of wheels and driving in Kerbal Space Program is uh, it's a little bit janky and that uh, you don't actually lose much speed to um, coasting. Uh, there's not a lot of friction that causes pro uh, slowdowns with your wheels, so you can get to ludicrous speeds, 26 meters, 27 meters per second, and just continue flying along. And uh, this thing's pretty stable, so long as I keep it moving in a straight line, uh, but I will need to brake dramatically if I want to turn in any way. But uh, we've basically got this thing moving like a train, so we are pointed in the direction that we want to go, and we're just kind of hauling butt along that path. So uh, I'll let you know when we start seeing something interesting. All right, so as we are approaching the place where the Duna Surveyor detected silicates, we can see a new color show up here, and that is the lowlands, which is not what I was expecting. Whoa, be careful. What did I say about being careful while turning? Goodness gracious. All right, so we did detect silicates out here, so I thought that silicates were bound to... Oh, lowlands does have silicates. Lowlands has more silicates. All right, so I seem to have taken a wrong turn. This has brought us to the lowlands, not to the uh, northern shelf at all. So maybe this is the northern shelf. More driving! We drove back past our landing site and in the direction of another deposit of silicates that we found, and we found the northern shelf. Because we want to keep this in sight. We want to basically ride this border up north to the poles. And at that point, we are going to be able to hopefully find uh, a great place for our landing site. Because ideally, I would like them to be able to touch, but I will settle for a place where they're just close. You know what I mean? Where they are just a couple kilometers away, and then we can use some kind of logistics rover um, to connect the bases. And then that won't be a problem. So now it's just a matter of heading north and seeing if we can't find... Uh, what we're looking for. Meanwhile, we've arrived at the northern shelf, so we should stop and do this science really quickly. Turn on the brakes, slow it down safely, please, and run the geological analysis. All right, so we've safely transferred all of our science back up to the cab, and we are headed north in hopefully the right direction. Uh, let's get the CurbNet scanner open once again. Do, do, do CurbNet access. All right. And we're driving in the right direction. We will save the game. Turn on the auto refresh. Turn off the brakes and off we go. Now it's just a matter of turning so that we ride this border properly. All right. So we have come once more to the lowlands and I'm pretty much becoming concerned that uh, we are not going to be able to have a base that touches all three biomes. Uh, I can't really see anything close enough from here, but this looks like kind of my last point of the Midland Sea uh, to the north. So let's see, where is this? That's right there. So that's kind of our last point of the Midland Sea where the Midland Sea and the Northern Shelf touch. So now it's just a question of how far away is the poles from this point? The Shelf Sea Barrier. Uh, it also has the Lowlands, which, let's see, if I look at my list here, what does the Lowlands have? Well, the Lowlands does not actually help us. It does not have the metallic ore that the poles has, which is what we need from the poles. It does have a better amount of silicates than the northern shelf does, but I'm not sure if that actually helps us in any way. Well, let's uh, mark this little area because this is a barrier between three different biomes, which may be a good substitute. So we're going to go north from here and just see what we find. All right, so we have reached the poles, finally, uh, in the middle of a dust storm, it appears. Um, so I think that our Kerbals are actually going to set up camp here and wait out this storm and wait until the, I don't know, like, I can't actually imagine that this storm is causing the uh, lack of 
sun that I'm getting right now because we're actually losing energy at 1x speed. But um, yeah, I think we're going to chill out here. But we have found a location between the northern shelf, the poles, the southern basin, and the northern basin. Uh, after looking at a bit of a biome map, I have found that the Midland Sea does not actually touch the poles anywhere. And uh, that was just an artifact of my scanning from the survey satellite from orbit. Uh, I was not actually able to see that that was the case. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out a better place for us to park. But we are currently in between four biomes right here. So maybe this would be an interesting thing. So uh, unfortunately, I'm all out of time for this episode. So we'll have to get to that a little bit later. I'll be able to do a little bit of research and find... Uh, basically recrunch my numbers and figure out a better place for us to set up our base location on uh, if you enjoyed this episode please share and subscribe and i will see you next time